The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host... A jelly donut! David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you, and I care. Barry Stein. I can use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, June 16, 2018, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage. And today, for cigar retailers, today is the Super Bowl of cigar retail. It's Father's Day weekend. And a lot of little cigar brands this week, this can make or break their entire year. We're going to pull back the curtain and discuss what others are saying behind closed doors. Are the big cigar companies trying to eliminate the competition by destroying the industry? We're going to name names. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Okay, before we start the show, uh, we have some uh, news to report, some terrible news to report. Our guest today for the show will not be joining us today. Scheduled today was Eric Hansen from Hammer and Sickle Cigars and his dad, which we referred to as Popsicle. His name is Rick, uh, Eric actually, um, and uh, they will not be here. Um, and to tell us uh, why and what has happened uh, and uh, explain to us is the national sales manager for Hammer and Sickle Cigars, our friend Eric Wentworth. Thanks for having us, boys. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to read a quick statement here uh, that was prepared for me by Anthony Feletra, who is the CEO of Clin Group. It is with a heavy heart that I am here today to inform you of the passing of our chairman and friend, Eric P. Hansen. Eric was one of the most innovative minds in the world of vodka and cigars, and he will truly be missed. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, his wife Jennifer, his daughters Caroline and Ella, his mother and father Martha and Rick, and his sister Ellen. Eric created a path and a plan for both vodka and cigars. We will honor Eric by continuing to follow his path. The day-to-day -day operations as chairman of Klin Group will be headed up by Rick Hansen, Eric's father. Rick will be transitioning the current president and CEO, Anthony Feletra, to take the role over. We are extremely fortunate to have Rick during these trying times. The day-to-day -day operations for Clint Tobacco will be headed up by myself, and it's, yeah, it's going to be challenging. Um, these are going to be really hard times for all of us within the company. Um, we want to thank everyone for their condolences during this time. Eric will be missed, but not forgotten. So with that being said, yeah, let's to let's I toast to Eric toast. Hansen, uh, our good friend of the show, and uh, personally, great guy. We've already uh, lit up our cigar, the uh, Hermitage, which is part of the Cigar Authority care package. You guys all have it. Again, none of us saw this coming and uh, knew of anything. We, we had a three-day event planned with uh, Eric and his dad, uh, Thursday, Friday, and today, Saturday, starting off with our show today and uh, ending tonight with a cigar dinner where we have 120 people um, attending, and the show must go on. Uh, the, the dinner will, will happen. And um, the, the reason for the cigar dinner that we do every year, father and son cigar dinner, is, um, you know, you never know... Um, what happens in life that, um, you know, you, you're with your dad one day and uh, the next day he's gone and you wish you could have that cigar with him. Uh, even if they're not a cigar smoker to sit down and, um, you know, the, the, the event is not a, um, a lot going on besides a, a bunch of father and sons and, in my case, my father and my daughter. And um, in this case, the son died. 
and you know you don't know either way of right. what's going to happen. Life is short, <clears throat> and uh, here it is. Um, you know, eight days ago, uh, he passed, yep. and you know we did the show last week, and and we knew what happened, and um, everybody was on a um, you know need to know type of basis. Well, people were trying to figure it out what has happened. So we we said nothing, and we <coughs> we, we didn't bring up that Eric was going to be on the show or anything. But we knew, and it, it was uh, a rough week. I know it was tough for you guys, oh, and we very bad. appreciate the discretion. And uh, not not hard to, to not <coughs> say, say anything to anybody, but to actually go on with the show. And um, last week and this week, too, you know, I always look forward to doing the show, but the past couple of weeks, yeah. um, you know, it was a whole different thing because, you know, having this information and uh, – not doing it. And maybe this is going to actually make us feel better that we're talking about it. Who knows how we all grieve in this. But, um, you know, um, Eric um, was a customer here at Two Guys Smoke Shop. That's how I know him first. Mm-hmm. And he used to come in the store and um, really under the radar type of guy that he'd come in and, and walk himself into the humidor and grab four or five boxes of Davidoff cigars and go to the register, and it'd be a couple of thousand dollars rung up. And then, you know, if, if I was up in the office or whatever, he would go into his car, put the cigars away, come back in, and then ask for me. And I'd come down, and I'd say, oh, Eric, how are you? What's going on? And he says, oh, I brought you not a bottle of vodka, a case of vodka. <laughs> and I say, no, no, I'm all set. And he says, well, you know, give him, somebody comes in or something, give him a drink or whatever, and you have it in your office or whatever, or, or take it home, or whatever you want to do. And I said, no, let me, let me get some. What do you need? What do you do? He says, I'm all set. Because he came in and he bought the yeah, scars, put them the in the car and all that. And this stuff would go on for the longest time. And, um, you know, we, we have a bag of candy here that, that um, Barry... Uh, bought before the show because this is how Eric would come in. Um, it was his calling card. Yeah, with a bag of candy and you know just trying. That was to a make nice it, touch, Barry. Thank you. Just trying to make everybody happy. And 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 to, what he did to Eric. I mean, this is the first time I've ever seen Barry reach into his pocket to buy anything. So I think <laughs> yeah. Eric Hansen may have rubbed off on you oh in some my way. God. Well, you, you're talking about a, a man that was a philanthropist. How do I say philanthropist? that? Philanthropist. Um, <laughs> you're close. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. No, way, way to go there, Elmer Fudd. <laughs> yeah. But he was a guy who gave a lot. When I tell you a lot, I mean it was part of his job was giving giving to people. Um, and One we're of talk, the most generous people. You don't know about it because he didn't want it to be known. And I'll even say um, the Cigar Association of New Hampshire, we did one of our first fundraisers, and um, there he was at the very beginning, new to the cigar industry, and of course he's in. Uh, our first advertiser here on the Cigar yep. Authority was Eric Hansen. Well, that pizza party raised however much money it raised, and at yeah, the end like, he it, made the announcement, whatever you raise today, I'm going to match it. Right. So it was $14,000. And he paid his way in, which was whatever it was for manufacturer to be there, along with giving the cigars and being there himself. And, um, you know, there was all the retailers there in New Hampshire, and most of which who didn't even carry his product. And um, he said, yeah, let me know how much that was. And I said it was about 14 grand. He goes, we'll find out exactly how much it was. And I'm like, well, he wants to know exactly how much it was. And I'm like, okay. And I come back, $14,220. And he goes, okay. And opens a checkbook and writes fourteen thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and here you go. And I go, Are you sure you want to do this? You don't have to do this. And he said, I want to do it. And I said, Okay. And just doubled this. There's so many stories. I mean, we could do the whole two hours on telling telling you so many things that have happened. Well, he sponsored my wedding. Right. I mean, he gave my wife and I all the vodka we needed and all the yeah. ginger beer we needed for our Moscow mules. Yeah. Just so many things of he'd be in the store and a, a man in uniform, a military guy, would come up with a box of somebody else's cigar. And I would see him catch it on the corner of his eye. He'd say, excuse me, and he'd walk over the register, and he would make the purchase for them. They were buying somebody else's brand, and he paid for it. He didn't try to say, let me give you mine instead or anything like that. No, he just didn't even say he was with a cigar company. Yep. His one of mine, I want you to give mine a try. There was no other thing than let me do this for this person. That was it. He loved our military. He was great to him. I remember once I was on a plane, um, 
and he was in first class. And a guy in uniform came through. He got right up, gave a seat to him. Oh, my God. And uh, it's just. I've it, never met somebody like that in my life. I, I know a lot of caring and giving person. I try to be that myself, but this guy was in a different league. Everybody, yeah. A lot of people in life, to a degree, are selfish. He, was, he had no ounce of selfishness oh in his body. Oh, my God. It, w- it was the craziest thing. So, you know, we run um, promotions in, inside Two Guys Smoke Shop. And, Eric, I think you were there that day. Um, I was in the Nashua store, and it was the end of a quarter, or the end of a month, and they see old Five yes. Freddy running around like a nut, and everybody's uh, looking at the register where it is, and it was uh, a, a tight <clears throat> month, a quarter, whatever we were at. It was a year ago this month. Really? Yes. And um, I believe you're right. Yeah. So he said, he Eric says, "What's going on with him?" I see, you know, he's got a jump in a step or something. I said, "Ah, trying to close out the month and try to to make." the bonus and whatever is going on. And he said, what does he need to get there? And I said, ah, it's four or $5,000, whatever it is. I said, I don't know exactly what it is. And he gets up and he says, Freddie, what do you need to do? And Freddie said, oh, whatever, it's never mind. It's whatever. He goes, well, how far are you off? And he goes like 4,200 or something. And he says, oh, okay. And then Eric comes by, back to where I was sitting, grabs his... Uh, wallet and keys mm-hmm. and whatever was there and stuff and said I'll be right back I gotta go shopping <laughs> and he goes into the humidor <laughs> with piles and piles of other people's brands yep. of cigars and make you know he has to take a couple of trips because yep. it's $4,200 and he said <laughs> we should be there and he rings him up and I, you, you know even the employees are saying you sure you want to do this yeah. you, this is crazy and he says no I need to do it he, I need to do it, is what he would say. Yeah. And rung him up, and he's there, and he says, okay. He says, guess what? The guy came back, sits with me, he says, hey, the guy's made their numbers for the month. And I said, you know that cost me $15,000. <laughs> and he said, good. <laughs> you should be happy. And I said, I am happy. I said, I've never met anybody like you in my life. And I'm, I'm glad I got to say that to him a whole bunch of times. When I would see him do that, I've just never seen him. Somebody like this. And he cracked open one of the boxes and gave everybody yeah. one of the cigars. Yeah. Yep. That was probably my favorite thing about him is that if he was buying a box of cigars, everybody that worked that day was getting one of the cigars yeah. that he bought. I even gave him the, the first Cohiba Bahike. was brand, brand new. It was the talk of the town. And he came from Russia or wherever he had visited. And he came back. He said, do you ever hear of this? And I said, it was a three-pack, right? The three-pack that originally came open. Do yes. you ever hear of this? And I said, I did. I said, oh, my God. I said, this is it, huh? I said, it's absolutely the real deal. He says, oh, it's the real deal. So he says, uh, have one. I said, no, no, no. He said, well, I never had it before, so let's smoke it together. And I said, okay. And then he called Ed out from the back, and he says, Ed, pick one. And, you know, there's three different sizes of them, and, you know, we're going for the small one or whatever. Right. And he goes, just pick the one you want. And I said, no, no. And he goes, no. He says, let me pick first. And he took the small one. And, you know, it was like just there's so many. There's so many things like this that happen over and over and over again. Uh, the guy batted a 1,000. I mean, there was never a time that it, it, he didn't wow me. That's why he loved the cigar industry because it was about a brotherhood. It, it was about experiences, not alone you know you're you're smoking with somebody and yeah enjoying the experience with someone else he used and to always refer to hammer and sickle as a lifestyle brand correct it wasn't that he was just pitching vodka like everybody else was pitching vodka or pitching cigars like everybody else he believed that the the idea was to you know much like a, a rich guy might come in and buy a davidoff or a padrone and this is their lifestyle brand but this was the working man's lifestyle brand correct a way to step up without really breaking the bank yep and yeah that's he lived it absolutely he lived the hammer and sickle lifestyle no we always we always joke around or we we always say that uh the cigar shop is the is the great equalizer you'll have wealthy guys hanging out with blue collar guys and he was the epitome of that because here's a guy that comes from a very wealthy family he was well to do in life but he didn't matter what your station was. He oh. treated you no different than somebody at the country club. Yeah. 
It didn't matter if you did wash dishes for a living, whatever, you were the same as the person that managed a multi-million dollar portfolio. And, and I saw those people at the wake, which, by the way, was um, a good hour long out to the street, Easily. down the street, around the corner. At all times. Uh, yeah, it just didn't stop. Uh, it started at 4 o'clock, so I thought I'd play it safe and get there at 4 o'clock. There was 200 people that thought the same thing before me because uh, I had to be at least 200th in line uh, at the opening, and it never stopped. Yeah, I got there at, uh, we closed at 6, so I was there by about 6.35, and I waited an hour and 15 minutes in yeah. line. Long. Yeah. Although I did find out uh, one of your guys, JC, was cutting people in line on the other side, and that's why it took so long. Yeah, he was smuggling <laughs> like to, people in. Yeah, I'd like to file a formal complaint. I was so <laughs> confused by that. By so, the way, you had the memorial service at, at Vesper after the uh, cemetery this past week. Correct. And there's people from the chat room from Vesper, and they, uh, they want to thank Eric Wentworth uh, for properly showing them how to light and enjoy a cigar on Thursday. Oh. So there's people from his country club yeah. listening to the show today. Well, okay. I had fun with you guys. I appreciate you being there and uh, helping us get through this tough time together. Boy, uh, a, a lot of friends... Um, you know that many people, and you know when you we're talking forty-five year old man that, that has, has yeah, left 45. us. Forty-five. Um, it was two thousand eight that he started um, the Hammer and Sickle Clin Group, the vodka, um, and very shortly after um, the cigars. Um, two thousand ten, we shipped our first cigars. Okay, and um, you know a young man, but v- so very smart that um, this is a guy that. I would sit and talk with, and even the way he taught me, and, and you've been with him for five years now, right? I yep. mean, he, he had a way of teaching you that you didn't feel like an idiot as he was teaching me, you know, what I don't know. Well, you guys I, knew me beforehand. Right. I'm a completely different person. Yeah. Like the day after I was hired, he changed me without me knowing. Yeah. He just had a subtle way of making people better. Yeah. And yeah. It, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me and my family. And He taught me how to be a better retailer, and he was never in retail. <laughs> right. You know, just so many things that, you know, remember him teaching us of, oh, yeah, if you put something here, you're going to force them to walk in this direction. The and interruptions. Yeah. yeah. So many different things. Violators. Like, violators. violators. Yeah, yeah. violators. Uh, there were so many things be- because he understood it in liquor industry or whatever, and this was the great thing about somebody from outside this industry coming into this industry to make this industry better at that point. And you've seen things, believe me, you've seen things in other people's stores and other companies that have done things, and it stems from um, what he brought into this industry. And uh, just amazing stuff. Um, the, um, the packaging. Yeah, which was ev- everything so unique. It's, it's glass boxes, marble boxes, leather boxes. Everything but wood. One time he used wood, but oh no, it wasn't regular wood. It was wood that he took from barrels, wine barrels. Bordeaux wine barrels. Yeah. He had board- wine barrels deconstructed in France, shipped to us. And then he had a, a shipbuilder in uh, Portsmouth. In right? Portsmouth, yeah. 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 Put them together. Yeah. It took the guy to build the boxes. It took him about seven months just to construct the boxes. It was nuts. So we had had him on the show. I think it, it might have been the first time. And we were taking calls at the time. My grandfather calls in from Florida. And he asks us a bunch of questions that had nothing to do with Hammer and Sickle. And that's who we're, we're talking to Eric from mm. Hammer and Sickle. And he's just talking about different cigars that he smoked. And Eric entertained him. And then after he hung up, he said to me, that's your grandfather? And I said, yeah. He goes, I'm buying him a box yes, of yeah. second growth. Right. And at the, at the end, I said, that was great that you said it on the show. And everybody heard you and it's awesome absolutely unnecessary and he said i already bought it it's in the bag waiting for you behind the counter yeah. so there was no way i could talk him out of it yeah your 90 year old grandfather smoking from smoking cheap cigars to smoking that right 32 dollars a piece 30 yeah 600 dollars yeah. change box so i had given him to my grandfather when he finally came up from florida and he starts handing them out to everybody. And I knew he was going to do it. So I go around behind the scenes with a, a box of regular hammer and sickle. And I traded every single cigar back out <laughs> yeah. and said, you don't understand. This is Grampy Cigar. I'm so sorry. I told them the story. They all understood. They took the second cigar and I put him back in. So to him, this box never ran out. And at the very end, he, he, he and I ended up smoking the last cigar together. And he said, uh, 
well, that was very nice of that man to give me these cigars. And I said, yeah, they were $32 or $33 a piece. And he choked on a cigar. <laughs> yeah. I After said, it's I, over, yeah, I can't believe, I never would have smoked him. And I right. go, I understand. That's why we told you, right? So, uh, and, a, and a lot of people in the cigar industry don't know Eric Hansen because he wasn't the front guy, right? He's not the guy that, want, you know, he was nice enough because he was a local enough to actually come on our show. But more than not, you're the guy that's usually on the people's shows, right? The idea of Hammer and Sickle, the lifestyle brand, was to build a brand around the brand, not around a person. Right. Because he, he had so many things going on. Right. He wasn't just doing vodka and cigars. He had a million other things yeah. he was involved in. So he didn't have the time to travel and do all that stuff. So it, it was about the brand and not a person. Yeah. And uh, But if you didn't yeah. get a chance to ever meet him and know him, I'm telling you, we're, uh, we're, we're all... Um, he was the best. Yeah, missing... It's, it's, a, it's a major missing element here in the industry. And you hear it of old timers that have been in the cigar industry for a long time, and this guy is less than 10 years that he's in the industry. This industry, believe me, is, it's a major loss for our industry, and a lot of people don't even know it. Um, the uh, Cigar Authority, which is a podcast, uh, we also do it on video, on a vodcast. You can uh, watch it on YouTube. The most watched YouTube ever for the Cigar Authority was with Eric Hansen. It was September 19, 2015, the introductory introduction of the trademark Maduro. Um, there's thousands of people. Out that, for three years. Unbelievable. Yeah. And um, it would be other people in, in the cigar industry. I, I would say more people in the cigar industry um, that own other brands and other parts of the industry as opposed to the consumer knew who Eric Hansen was and, and would look. Um, Nelson Alfonso that um, does Ataban Byron that, you know, mesmerized to the packaging and, uh, you know, the, the way he's branding and what he's doing and stuff. And, I, and, and you said in your comment that this is going to continue. The idea is yep. he's built this thing and it continues on from here. And I, I certainly hope it does because... We're uh, not going anywhere. All right. It, um, but when it comes to the IPCPR this year, which is less than 30 days away now... Uh, we will not be making it to the IPCPR this year. And, you know, again, we want to stress that we are not going anywhere. Um, just the timing of everything doesn't work out. Yeah, I um, mean, the booth was bought and paid for and everything was all set. You were going, but then this happens and... We have a lot to figure out in the next couple months here. And, uh, you know, we're taking a week off. You know, now it would be me going and... I'd probably have to bring Anthony Filetra, yeah, who has is familiar. training to become the chairman and yeah. run this entire company, and it, it just doesn't work out. It, we don't have the time right now. Um, we are not going anywhere again, but we won't be at the trade show. Um, but you're still in business. Still in business, not going anywhere, and we look forward to seeing everybody next year. Good, good. Um, so, you know, I meeting a lot of people and, and passing on stories at the wake and funeral with people. You're talking about presidents of banks and country clubs. And, you know, mm -hmm. as Barry said, along with the um, guy that did the lawns, yep. you know, was everybody was there. Everybody. It was amazing to see some of the people. And, you know, it's one of those rooms filled with people that, they didn't all belong together, but they did all belong together because they crossed his paths for right. one reason or another. And, and that's the way he looked at it. They, yeah. They, we all do belong together. He had it right. Yeah. Money doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. We're all just people. Get along. Same interests. We're all part of the same race. Exactly. Human. And, you know, he had it right. He didn't, he didn't judge on anything. Yeah. So. Eh, personality sometimes. That's a good point. He hated you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And for good reason. <laughs> for good reason. I'm just kidding. He loves no, you. No, his, his, uh, his humor was the best. 
and if you, it's full, as soon as you first met them and you didn't get it or something, you're not part of the thing, and then, you know, half hour into it or something, you say, oh, this guy is really funny. But at the beginning, maybe... The movie did, quotes. Yes. You just wouldn't oh. expect oh, someone. 80s movie quotes. It was a, he'd be, I'd throw the most bizarre one out there, and he'd be the only one in the place to get it. And i go, you're the guy. You're the guy I can... But he would fit. It, it didn't matter who you were, because if there was somebody else into something else, he could be the guy for that, too. He knew everything. He really did. He was involved in everything. If he was interested in it, he knew it the next day. He had the raciest jokes, too. He would leave, and I couldn't stop laughing. My sides would hurt. And fortunately, the jokes we can't share on the podcast. Yeah. Because, but, because that's yeah. what you liked. So yep. then he went into your thing. Yep. yep. He became a degenerate just like me. And then he'd go sit and talk with me, and then it'd be right on to business or whatever. Yeah. He's getting right right into that because that was my thing. And mm. he, he was a chameleon. You just yeah. go to the next person. Mm. And, and Then he'd talk to me, and we'd all be all about Barbie dolls yeah. and getting dressed up. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Well, you know, I, I, I just can't be any more sad for, for, uh, for, for, you know, and I know he was your, your best buddy, man. It was five years you were connected to him, so. Uh, and I just, we were inseparable. We did, yeah. you know, everything together. You know, the, our office was set up that way. He set up the office with people he wanted to hang out with because right. we spent 40, 50, 60 hours a week together. Yeah. And we all just had a good time. We were, it, that's what it was about, having fun, getting work done, and. So you're going to come tonight to the father and son dinner. I'm going to be there. And you'll say to the to the group the same thing. This is the information we have. Yep. And uh, I know everybody will understand. You know, every year it's a different father and son. And this year, you know, eight days, there was no time to make any changes or anything. And nor would I want to make any changes. But uh, we'll think of him. And um, those that are coming that are listening to the show, the show must go on. He would want it to be. Yep, we're just going to have fun. We're going to say what we got to say at the beginning, and then everybody enjoy your, your children and enjoy your father because you never know. And that's what it comes down to. So, you Eric, never know. Thank you for everything. Thank you for coming on. It wasn't necessary. I, I tried to actually talk him out and said, you don't have to do this. We'll say what we got to say. And, and, you know, Eric would want you to have done this. Nope. 100%. Go out there and do it, right? Yep. So you do. So you got to do it. You got to push through. And, uh, you know, the company's going to go on. He'd probably joke around and tell you where to bring down a room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what we have, right? Yeah, and, and make it so we're going to try not to bring the room down. We're going to get back to the regularly scheduled portion of the show after this break. We're going to take a break right now, Eric. Thank you for coming with it, coming thank in you with guys. us. When we come back, we're going to talk about the cigar industry and pull back the curtain. What are the family-owned and operated cigar companies saying about the big companies? Something's going on, and I don't like it. I'm going to name names, and we're going to dig in deep when I return. We're live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. This is David Garofalo, and you've heard me say it over and over again for many years. Please support your local cigar retailer, and I mean it. If you don't buy from them, they will go away, and then what? There'll be no place to go. That being said, sometimes you're far away from any cigar shops or a place that doesn't carry the stuff you've been hearing about and you want to try it. That's where twoguyscigars.com comes in. It's the number twoguyscigars.com. And unlike most online cigar shops, at twoguyscigars.com, you can buy a single cigar of whatever you want. You don't have to buy boxes or even five packs and suffer through cigars you might not even like. One of this and one of that is acceptable, appreciated, and commonplace at twoguyscigars.com. That's the number, twoguyscigars.com. Thank you for your business. Ooh, we're gonna have fun. When the Cigar Authority returns on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer & Sickle. 
live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the Silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean Basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part, La Galera Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar and you are listening to the Cigar Authority. And we are back. Live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Soundstage, right above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. Now in our ninth year, you can find the Cigar Authority on social media. Please be our friend. Subscribe to the show and give us a review. Not just a review, a five-star review. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. That was a rough uh, segment. Yeah. I've been thinking of that all week that I had to get on here and uh, talk about it, but 
it's supposed to be good for you, right? You're supposed to get it out and say it, but again, I could go on for hours of uh, the different uh, things he's added to my life and a lot of people, uh, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. Uh, let's get back to uh, the regular show and start making, uh, joking around and trying to be uh, telling stories or whatever. Well, of course, your next story is not a joke either. It's not a joke. <laughs> So, you know, I had Rocky Patel up here last week. We did an event with him and to, talking to him about um, what's going on in the cigar industry and then different retail. I heard from a lot of manufacturers over this week because they knew uh, how close I was with Eric and uh, he's a local boy up here. And uh, so, you know, we talk about that and then we get into some um, regular cigar business, what's going on. And FDA, warning labels, all the stuff that's going on, the trade shows coming up and, you know, everything that's happening in the cigar business. But this has been going on for the longest time of me hearing from um, the smaller manufacturers talking about the bigger manufacturers and what they seem to be doing to us, the negative stuff that's happening um, uh, in the background. It, negative or maybe doing nothing, right? right? While they're working their ass off trying to make things better, um, they're not getting any action from the bigger companies. And then finally something was actually posted. And I saw it, so somebody just <coughs> couldn't take it anymore and said, that's it, I'm just going to say it. And this is Facebook, right? I think? It certainly looks like Facebook. Okay. So it was uh, Carlos Calido Fuente Jr. This is uh, Calido Fuente from uh, a Toro Fuente Cigar Company, and he writes, It seems very obvious that the big boys want to eliminate the family businesses that have gone and have gone against the hard fight the Cigar Rights of America, the CRA, has put their heart and souls behind to save the premium cigar industry. There is presently a lawsuit against these unreasonable warning labels, which will absolutely destroy the art, tradition, culture, and century-old history of these beautiful cigar lithographs and the proud heritage of the artisan culture. We must stand behind the legacy of family handmade cigar companies and family brick-and-mortar tobacconists of America. These Big mass producers seem to do everything to eliminate the legacy of honored families whom have given their all through generations for the sake of marketing share, profits, and the, all the ambitious big cigar companies, which in many people's opinion is to control by destroying. Shame on them. So he put it out there, and he got a lot of backlash for it. I actually applaud him for, for, for saying it. Um, and then comes the next one and the next one, and then they're able to end up saying it. Somebody has said it, said it, broke ground and said what it is. By saying it, maybe putting the, the spotlight on them, maybe this will slow them down or make them think because my feeling of this and, you know, taking one of these big massive companies um, that aren't even, a, you know, there is not a person from the company there is a president of the company, possibly, and he could be from this country or not this country. Right. Um, but the president of the company, of the corporation, is just a person that came in from another industry, came in, and his job is to raise revenue, raise market share, move the needle. And that's how he's judged, and that's his only job what he does. And I've seen them come and go, believe me. Mm -hmm. They do it. They destroy things around them. And then they leave. They're off to Procter & Gamble. They're off to Coca-Cola, whatever right. next corporation they're going to go to. In the meantime, destroying this. And this is what's going on. And as we're in this battle right now with FDA, you're seeing some of the companies coming out, and we're saying to them, no, no, the, the warning labels are going to destroy us. No, nope, <coughs> they produce the package that doesn't destroy their packaging, and they say, oh, no, here it is. In other words, screw them. Months before it has to be done. Right. It's almost like waving a white flag. In the meantime, that we have a lawsuit that say mm -hmm. we're not going to do it. Well, you're saying it's okay, we're giving up, and we're talking about the guys with the most market share that end up doing it. So in the end, we lose the battle because we're, we're fighting, and within our little group... We have a wolf in sheep's clothing, really. And, and there's a few of them. It looks like they're on our side because they happen to sell a product that looks similar to handmade premium cigars, and it isn't that. Well, 
They're, they're panicking because they're losing market share. I think it's out of pure panic. You know, somebody, they're the bully. Bully picks on you. What are you going to do? You, you fight back. The bully, the pick on person fights back. You team up with another bully to kick the guy back down. Right. Well, the David Goliath sim- syndrome yes. that's happening here. And the Goliaths, I mean, it, 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 they have more money. They have more resources. They have everything. And when all is said and done, when it ends up happening, the little guy, and I've seen it in other industries, to, to understand what's going to happen in this industry, you've got to look at under, other industries where mon- monopolization has happened and this type of thing goes on. And you see exactly what happens, which is the little guy gets stamped out, he's gone, and then they rise to the top. When they rise to the top, and maybe you, you, the consumer, you're buying because it's a better price and all that, but what ends up happening is once they squish those other guys out, then they raise the prices at that point. Okay, right. we got them out, and now, okay, the prices go up. So they even using the consumer against the the, the small uh, manufacturer. And that goes for brick-and-mortar retailer also because some of these guys are opening massive retail operations on top of it and, once again, squashing out the American-owned, family-owned and operated retail establishment. So he mentions right in there, not only does he talk about manufacturing, the manufacturer itself, but he's also saying the brick-and-mortar retailer also. So he's standing up for us. We, I think we have to stand up for him too. Absolutely. So, uh, again, if it's something we learned from Eric Hansen, right? You, you try to help everybody, even if it's uh, not something, you know, he's not a brick-and-mortar retailer, but, and, he, and he does sell to these massive companies, but we got to do something. It's the Walmart mentality. You look, Main Street America is pretty much gone due to the big box store, and that's what these manufacturers want to do. They want to be the big box store and destroy Main Street America. Oh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna go well. And I, I'll tell you, I when I was in this originally open two guys smoke shop, we sold cigarettes too. And I quickly learned the cigarette industry was the mass producers, the big giant guys, and uh, I didn't like them. And I would meet the little cigar manufacturer guy, and I loved them. And over a few years, I said, okay, I'm going to eliminate cigarettes altogether, and I'm going to just go with what I like. Uh, if I'm going to do this the rest of my life, let me do it with people I want to hang out with and absolutely uh, you know surround yourself with those you love yeah so I ended up doing that and now here we are with the cigar industry is going into that direction and I don't like it even and correct me if I'm wrong even our trade show organization the IPCPR is set up in such a way that if you have the money you can succeed and if you're a smaller company absolutely you absolutely struggle they put the the little guys tucked away in the back corner. And, and, and it was one of the things, as I sat on that board of directors for two, three-year terms, that was part of my thing to try to end up changing it. And those that were on the board that sat with me know what I would bring up all the time is I said, let's do this more like the old mall mentality and have the anchor stores in the corners. Yes, as opposed to right in the front row blocking every single thing. They put up massive walls, and there's a little guy in the back of the massive wall nobody can see, and the, and the guys knew. And their sales pitch to him is, well, you'll get, you know, when they come out of the back door of that booth, you'll get them there's flowing a wall. into your there's booth. No, there's, there's no, there's no, no back, back door. door. <laughs> the, the guy's in nowhere's land, and he can't be seen. So looking at the stats that I would look at each time, I said, you know, the average new cigar company that comes in lasts an average of one and a half years, and they're gone. One and a half years. I said, so we have no future. Right. You know, we as a cigar store, if my average customer was 60 years old, we got 20 years to go and we're going to have no customers. So we got to bring in new people. We as the IPCPR need the, the new retailer, the new manufacturer to actually succeed. So I want to do the opposite. I wanted them on the corners in the back, especially if they have a wall, put them in the back. You're automatically going to be going, people are going to be going to them and then have these, the front four rows designated with balloons on them as their new retailers. The following year, they go back to the next thing and then work it on and give them a shot and help the new guy. I don't know who the new guy is, right? but whoever he's going to be, let's help him because the business, as I wore that hat of IPCPR, my business was for that to grow, for the IPC to grow. Well, it doesn't grow when, and I, and I look at the, at the floor plan of this year, it's the massive companies that are in front blocking all the little guys, and the little guys, you, you know, if, if they don't do a good show, it's enough to, to cripple them. Yeah, sometimes they don't write enough orders to just cover being at the show. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. How many times, if you were to put a dollar into an ATM and then it ate it every single time, how many times are you going to put that right. dollar in? So after a few years, they say, I'm not going to do the show anymore. They don't do the show anymore. Now they have no visibility. And then a year or two after that, they're not even in business anymore. And just watch this thing happen more every than, single time. More than way. one company has said to me it would be <coughs> more cost effective for them to fly to their top 10 accounts. <coughs> yeah. Take them out for a round of golf, get wine them and dine them and really make them feel good. And they would spend less doing that to their top 10 accounts across right. the country than going to the trade show. But they need new accounts. They need new retailers to carry their brands. How do they do that? And we're, you know, I want to say it's, it's unfair, but it's not unfair because those guys built from maybe a small company at one time into there. Now they have the money, infrastructure, and people to be able to do it. Okay. But they but, had a different IPCPR back then. Yeah. It Absolutely. was a different animal, yeah. much smaller, much more condensed. People were setting up booths as just tables with a, with a cloth behind them. Yeah. So, um, actually, that, that post that I just read from Carlito Fuente, I guess, was um, started the Facebook post on Cigar Aficionado and then shared by uh, Carlito Fuente. So it started at the Cigar Aficionado level. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, Cigar Aficionado level. Um, so who are the big boys? And I said I'd, I'd name names. Um, they are General Cigar, which is uh, Imperial Tobacco. You have Altadas. Uh, you have uh, Swisher. And I could even say now, possibly even Nat Sherman, which is Philip Morris, Altria, yeah. that right. owns that. Yeah, they're no longer a family-owned company. Yeah. So these are major corporations. And I'm drawing a blank. Who bought Oliva? J. J. Cortez. J. Cortez. J. Cortez, that's another European company, but family still owned company. family owned, family owned, still massive. Well, so and, you, and, you, and can, you can't the, harm them for, be, for being successful. No, but, but they are, because of the the size of their company, they become a threat. They be, they they become capable of being one of these big boys, in my opinion. Well, in if, Europe, w they are, but you'll you'll you may see in this country that they start acquisition. And starting because their competition are those big guys, and they either become one of those big guys or get stamped out by one of those big guys. Right, so they're going to buy them. You know, back to our crazy scenario of who's going to buy who and, and how it's going to go, this is the reason why this type of thing is happening. Um, so who are the family-owned brands? You know, bigger brands, because they're, they're all family-owned brands and stuff, but you look at somebody like Fuente. He's the one writing this. Mm -hmm. So he's a family-owned company. It's family-owned and operated. J.C. Newman, who's their distributor, but another family-owned company that's there. Rocky Patel, uh, La, La Fleur Dominicana, Padron, mm -hmm. Ashton. We're talking family-owned companies that are there. All successful, yeah. all doing very good. My father, family. Yep. Family. Aren't they also all on the board of... Um CRA. 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 These are your top CRA guys. And I mention this because when I do go to Washington, D.C., and you know, I haven't in probably over a year now, but I've been many, many times, say a dozen times. Each time I go there, I bump into these same exact people that are there, the same ones. And why is it the same ones? Because, and I don't bump into the other ones, the big ones. They're not there. They actually have a, their own lobbyists, their right. own people, because their agenda is different. And it's sad to say some of the agenda is actually to hurt the industry, which will in turn help them. But it, it, how does that end up helping them? Because the, the, the regulations are going to be so bad, it's going to put their competition out of business. It's going to hurt them too, but it's going to put them out of business, their competition, before they can rise. Take a little pain now for a lot of gain later. Absolutely. Um, so what do we do? What do we do? We don't so want this to happen. Why hasn't Fuente, J.C. Newman, Rocky Patel, La Florida Minicana, Padron all just joined forces and become that super group that we had on the board and kick everybody's ass? Sea bass. Because then do they become one of them? Is well, at that point, you've got, you, you've got yeah. all the... No, you've now got all these... Now they got a corporation. You've got all these on. families getting together to save the industry... All and then the, a rising tide raises all ships. But you got to put a board in place, and it no longer becomes about the family yeah. guidance. Then it becomes the numbers bottom line. And it, it just you a, just made the opposite argument about Jay Cortez. Now you're switching sides on me. No, but you're saying put all those people together, form a giant corporation, and then all of a sudden the giant corporation becomes a giant corporation. and then. But their motivation is different. Their motivation is pure versus just the business side of it. 
there's an art form to Fuente and Newman yeah, and the, Rocky Patel. The heads Patel. of all these comp of, of these corporations, I may or may not even know who they are. Correct. And, but we had Rocky the, Patel, the head of his corporation, at the event. Yeah. Yeah. By oh. the way, what other industry has that, where the the main guy is standing there giving giving the pitch on on all of his cigars that he's got. I, this is what I loved about the whole industry awesome. and stuff. That we, we go into the farm with the owner of Perdomo, and right. there's Nick Perdomo showing us the tobacco <laughs> leaves. And you know, you go, you know, it's just one. Nick, thing. don't you have anything better to do? Yes, he does. But <laughs> um, the corporate president, bean counters, it's profit market share, and leave us the mess. That's what ends up happening there, and that's what happens and it's sickening it's it's crazy that it's happening and i don't know what to do about it but we got to think about what to do about about it but right now let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at asylum cigars they're coming to take me away haha -ha. they're coming to take me away ho ho he he ha ha to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time and i'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to take me away It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. A woman from Martha's Vineyard has filed a lawsuit against the Canadian company that she rented her house to. The lady rented her house to Mile High Distribution, only to find out that every room in her house was used to film pornography. Scenes were filmed in the kitchen, on the sofa, and even in her bed. The lady stated that the rental agreement did not give them permission to film such movies that could have included the titles Hiding the Cuban Missile and Chappaquickie. And that's not only insane, it's Asylum. They're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha. -ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. I was quite proud of Chapa Quickie. Chapa Quickie. <laughs> you you giggle when you give the punchline, though. <laughs> yeah. You can't do it, Stone Cold. I can't Cold. do it with a straight face. <laughs> I don't see why it w why she would have a, a right to have that expectation because you're renting the house and then whatever you do in the house. Uh, do people not have sex when they rent houses? Well, I don't know what the, the agreement looked like, but there could have been something in there that the rental is not for commercial purposes. Therefore, they would be in violation of the agreement. If it's stipulated in there, she has a case. If it's not stipulated, she doesn't have a well, case. Well, what if you're filming and at the time you don't know that these videos are going to go on the Internet? You're just filming you know, for posterity's sake. Mile Man. High Distribution is a big-time <laughs> pornography company, so they knew what they were doing. You knew who I, they I, were. I, they were in my browser history. There we go. <laughs> Can't say as I'm surprised. So he, as, <laughs> as he pulls his phone away from me at that moment, <laughs> Mr. Jonathan. <laughs> you know, Dave, I think another point on the large corporations is even if you take it outside of the cigar industry, once you have shareholders... Yeah, That's won't. what dictates the decisions you make. Yes. You know, if you're an independent owner, you can do something because it's the right thing to do. So the guy, the guy at the top of the helm, you're saying, may have no choice. He doesn't want to do it. He's he got to do what's have, good for business. Everybody has a boss once you're in a public corporation, right? Yeah. The CEO has to answer to the board of directors, who in turn answer to the shareholders. So everything becomes about bottom line and we have to make our numbers this quarter here's what we have to do we got to cut back on people we got to cut back on what we're spending on product but they find a way to make all the numbers work and it's a double-edged sword because if you decided as a consumer you were going to boycott those companies you're hurting somebody's job down the road there's there's other agendas and the cigar industry has three different companies that are fighting and actually spending the same, not the same amount of money, but spending money on the same exact issues. It's, it seems insane to do it. You have the CRA, Cigar Rights of America, the IPCPR, International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers, and the TAA, Tobacconist Association of America. I've been members of all three, and I ended up stopping a member 
of the TAA because I saw the direction. You mean CAA. CAA because I saw. We're still a member of the TAA. The TAA. We have CAA. plenty of those cigars, cigars to sell. Yeah. The CAA because their agenda was different than mine. And I said, okay, this does not match where I am. And I think it should go this way. And they think direct, yeah, we're going to absolutely go that way. And I go, well, it's going to end up hurting. So I belong in the IPCPR, International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailer, because that's what I am, right? So that's where I belong. CRA is you folks that are listening to this. Cigar Rights of America, which is supposedly a group of consumers. So the consumer group, like the NRA, that was the whole idea right. behind it. The problem is they're just not getting enough people to join it. Everybody's, if you're not a member, you need to be a member. You need to be a member. For $35, you're going to save yourself that in the, just in the taxes alone in the future. Or we need some consolidation to happen within here. The CRA and the IPCPR. Consolidating. Consolidating. Being together as one or something. Well, isn't that a tough decision to make because you've got these big companies with these massive booths who will, in the end, be funding. They'll be doubly funding on one side, funding to make the regulations go away. And on the other side, part of the CAA trying to make the regulations happen. They're funding both sides. Would they pull out of the IPCPR? if the CRA joins them. And I don't know if I want to say that the, the other side is making these things happen. I'm saying it. You're saying it, but, but I'm saying they're doing nothing to stop it. So they're almost there. You know, if this doesn't happen, that would be nice. But if it does happen, that would be nice too. So we're not going to make it happen but we're not going to do anything to stop it. The problem is they're better than 50% of the industry. So without them and, and, and some of the moves they make, so maybe they're listening. Maybe they're listening. And they, you know, is that why you're scared to say it? Say what? I'm saying everything. I said their names. I said everything. <laughs> but what I'm hoping to end up happening is that they end up, that, that <coughs> Carlito was man enough to, to say it, that maybe... That now opens it up, and we, we start talking about it. Because, you know, let's take Donald Trump, for instance. He went to North Korea. People yelling at him about, well, you, you went and, and met with him. And, you know, I don't know what your politics are. I don't want to get into it. But wasn't it very smart to actually meet with him and talk about it? Let's talk about the problems that, that are in hand instead of not talking about it. So here's the problem that's in hand. We're trying to stop this so the warning labels don't have them. We have a lawsuit in place. We're doing this, this, this. And then you are coming along and saying, okay, here it is. We're putting our stuff out months early because even though you have a lawsuit, this thing might go away. We're, we're saying we're fine with it the way it's going. You just heard us doing this. Right. So you, you made an action that actually hurt us. Don't you think that that's deliberate? Possibly. What do you mean possibly? Yeah. Of course it's deliberate. You're trying to say, and I get you, you're trying to play both sides of it a little bit, but that isn't, that's an act of war. That's some Sin Su stuff. They're, they're doing it on purpose with forethought to hurt the industry. They're paying to do it. It's costing them extra to actually make right. the move. Yeah, you can send in as many boxes as you want before the deadline, the existing deadline, which could change without the warning label. Only the stuff that ships after said date needs the warning label. Yeah, you know that the, 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 the other side, the, the people that want this FDA thing to happen, not, not in the cigar industry, um, that want these warning labels to happen, are going to show up with the packages all done and say, yeah, they're fine. They're already doing it. And then, therefore, somebody it's a bullet. goes forward and says, yeah. They handed them a bullet. Ugh, I hate that it's happening. The I one thing it. I don't understand is when I lived in New York, they had at the register um, a sign that said smoking was bad for you, yada, yada, yada. And there was a picture of somebody with a hole in their throat or missing all their teeth or what have you. Yeah. And the retailers in New York, I think it was the New York Tobacconist Association, they won an argument that it was a violation of free speech. Yeah. How come they won that and we haven't won this on the same platform? Yeah. And the stuff that we're writing on there, my argument continues to say, is we're writing things on there that are not true. Correct. Mm -hmm. Who picked those things and, and they're not true, and I want to make the argument, prove to me that those things that, that are said on there are true when it comes to cigars, right. that they're, they're true, and then we can go from there. But 
there's, there's little pushback, and, and these little companies, these bigger little companies that I, that I read out to you, um, are, are spending millions of dollars, man. They're bleeding out, and, they, and they're helping even the littlest of little, little companies that can't spend that kind of money. But some of these little guys, I'm telling you, right after this trade show, we're only 30 days from the trade show, they're not going to have a good trade show, and it's curtains. It's over. Mm -hmm. Curtain call, that's going to be it. So you're gonna you see them on the shelf right now. If you're interested, buy them because they're not going to be there. Or what can you as a consumer do to keep them alive? You've got to you've got to buy smaller brands. Period. You've got to help the people that are helping the industry from smaller people. And I don't mean I don't mean the smallest guy either. I mean you could you could certainly stock up on Perdomos, and that's going to help because he's a medium sized company. Those those family, family owned, owned where you know. The name of the guy that owns the company, these are the cigars you should be buying. I agree. I've always tried to support the little guy, and we even tell you here on, I own my own, show, my own uh, stores, and I own my own mail order company, but go to your favorite brick-and-mortar store. If they don't carry them, I'd love the business, believe me, but please go to your brick-and-mortar retailer. Keep them alive so you've got a place to go to. And most brick-and-mortar retailers would be happy to special order something if it's yeah. something that they don't stock. All right, so anyway, we barely talked about the Hermitage. Um, great cigar. Th this is one that continues, right? Yes. This continues, yeah. correct. Very it. smooth. Little, Maybe it's a mental caramel. thing. What a great pairing with the vodka. And I'm not, yeah, a, I'm not an alcohol and cigars pairer. Someone sent me an email about uh, Balvini 21 and what would I pair it with. And when you have something subtle like a Balvini or like a hammer and sickle where there's there's just not an in-your-face flavor. You want to have a cigar that does have some in-your-face flavor yes. that'll stand up to the burn of the alcohol. And cutting it with water like we did with the ice cubes was the right play. But Hammer and Sickle Vodka doesn't have that burn. You know, it's not Fleischmann's. It's not a well vodka. <clears throat> this vodka is smooth enough to drink on its own. Does not need a mixer. No, I, I, I agree with you, but I like the couple of ice cubes in there just to... Well, I agree. I prefer still, chilled. It's still alcohol-y. Yeah. Well, in the next hour, we're going to smoke a cigar that um, they're not making anymore. Yeah, that was it. They made the thousand boxes and, and that's game it. over. And uh, Eric Hansen was kind enough to uh, give me box number 1,000 of 1,000 and signed it. Um, well, I'll tell you what he signed when we come back. We're going to take a break. When we come back, what's up in the cigar industry? What's coming up on the Cigar Authority in the future? And another cigar to light up. We'll tell you about that. It's Hammer and Sickle, and they don't make it anymore. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire, in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection.
You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's Cigar Journal. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is good smoke. This is the Cigar Authority. Smoke a cigar? Sure. The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. You'll get nothing and like it. With your host, you smoke vile cigars all day, David Garofalo. Oh, that's fine, as long as you're imported. Mr. Jonathan. You should have caught me before my operation. Barry Stein. I never drink. Why? And Ed Sullivan. I might even lend you my lighter. So it's time to light them up. <laughs> Good. The Cigar Authority is here. You are finally done. The show about nothing. 
And we're back with our number two broadcasting live from the Lafleur Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes in the cigar industry, and Barry knows what's up. We'll get to that and lots more. Welcome back to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Okay, as we said uh, before we went to break, this is uh, a box of cigars. They made a 1,000 of them. This is the Hammer and Sickle Moscow City, and um, it's a Toro 6x54, and uh, when they were made, they were all made at once. 1,000 boxes were made, and Eric said, uh, which box do you want? I want to give you a box. And uh, I said, I'll have number two, and he said, number two is taken. And um, I said, okay, I'll take number 1,000. So this was actually the last box of Hammer and Sickle Box 1,000 out of 1,000, and he signs it. Um, thank you for, thank you, exclamation point. Our friendship means the world to me, and it meant the world to me too. And I'll never forget you, Eric Hansen, but um, I get a box like this and I save it because maybe 10 years, long right. time. I let a long time go by, and then when I get together with that person or something, I say, I pull it out, and they're like, oh, my God, look at this. And I go, well, today's the day. Let's smoke it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have that opportunity to do uh, with Eric, but um, I do have Eric Wentworth, who stayed in the audience, is watching, so he's smoking one along. Uh, it's only a box of 10. Uh, I'm going to hang on to the uh, last row. And, Eric, let's not forget this. So years from now... Um, we'll, we'll continue to end up uh, smoking that. That's and that's something uh, you had gifted <clears throat> Eric Hansen a box of, uh, was it 19? I think 79. 79 Macanudos. Trying to explain, you know, he didn't realize that Macanudo made cigars in Jamaica back in the day. And I said, I have this and I want to give it to you. And he, he took it. We didn't smoke it or anything, but then he showed back a year to the day, put it in his calendar, and then shows up with two cigars each year. And says, hey, look what I brought. Today's the day. And I say, okay, I'm smoking a cigar in the next year, and the next year, and the next year. And it, every year. Which can, so every time he ends up smoking a cigar with me. But it was a gift for him to do whatever he wanted, but that's what he wanted to do again. And that's, that, but people shouldn't forget <clears throat> that that is what cigars are all about. Yeah. You get a tradition going with somebody, and my brother and I smoke cigars every year on the 4th of July. It's kind of our thing. We do a little grilling. We hang out, maybe ride the dirt bikes. But... That is the most precious time that we have together. There's no other stuff. Yeah. We just sit there and sometimes don't even say anything, just enjoying each other's company. And yeah. Yeah, the cigar awesome. gives you something to do when you're not talking. All right, what do we know about this, Barry? Well, today's second cigar is Moscow City, and it's the Toro Measuring 6x54. It features a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper over Dominican binders and fillers. And it's no longer available. However, you can still get some Moscow Cities at TwoGuysCigars.com. And if you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries them, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's TwoGuysCigars.com. So they don't make it any longer because of the wrapper and binder. Correct. On this, on this particular size, yes. Uh, can I ask Eric, Eric Wentworth a question? Is this what is in that Spire packaging? It's a version of it. It's a smaller ring gauge. Gotcha. Okay. So you could still get this blend in those jars. Yes. All right. There, there are some of those, those uh, Moscow City jars on the market at places. Is the second rendition coming out? That'll be coming out shortly. Second rendition will be coming out shortly. Okay. But that has a different cigar. Yeah, different cigar different altogether. Cigar no broadleaf, right? No broadleaf. That's actually going to be a tradition cigar. Yeah, it's going to so be tradition. So tradition will be in the yeah. spire number two. And the problem is Connecticut Broadleaf right now, that Connecticut Broadleaf is, is a, a tough, tough thing to get. Uh, not only do you have to overpay to get it, but try to get some good stuff. Where not to mention it's a, it's a regular crop. It's the United States. It's yeah. very weather-based. You only get one shot. And I don't know if Barry's going to get to it, but there's going to be a lot of issues, Connecticut Broadleaf being one issue that's going to be hard to get any cigar with Connecticut Broadleaf. It's also going to be hard any cigar made out of 
Nicaragua oh. that's having problems. We'll, right. get, we'll get to that in a little while. But right now, let's give this a cut and light. I'm dying to try it. How old is this now? This, this is, is nine years old? At least nine years old, yeah. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Cut that with authority. Mm -hmm. That was loud. Yeah. I thought maybe you got the microphone. Well, I had a make-up for the uh, first hour where we had the cigar cut in advance. Well, now every time you do it, I think of... Uh, I, say, I say it when I smoke a cigar regularly and I buy myself. I just go through it. But it was so great when Christian <laughs> was in here. He just cracked up over your sound effect there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Christian, there right at the beginning when we started the show, too, and he's yeah. one of the first advertisers. And um, the thing about Christian is he never listened to the show before. <laughs> so he did the show. He listened to the show while it was going on. He listened to it on the plane after he did, and he called me the next day with all kinds of, you know what you should be doing is this, this, this. I said, it's, we're on our ninth year. Here you are nine years later giving me the constructive criticism that I could have used a long time ago, but I'll take it. You know the, uh, those old school Italian lemon cookies mm. with, the, mm -hmm. with the white powder? I don't owe too well. What you got to do is you got to get a paintbrush. You got to brush off all that white powder because it, it has nothing to do with the flavor that's going on here. Then you take a bite out of the lemon cookie. How about not putting it on in the first place? Do you have to put it on and then take it off? Well, it's part of the cookie, okay. so it, it comes that way. <laughs> but there's, a, there's an old-school Italian leather, um, old-school Italian cookie taste on the cold drawer of this. Well, you, you freudantly said leather, which is w what you really taste. No. You freudantly said it. I didn't freudantly nothing. <laughs> you did. I was staring at a look at this. I got a leather Hermitage box in front of me. It's That's why I was saying leather. The leather is exciting him. Yeah. Send, right. send in the gimp. Enough. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Enough of the two of you. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Attaché. The Vertigo Attaché features an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom. <laughs> All right, I'm a laughing single now. I'm glad I'm starting to laugh. Good. Solitary jet. And the patented Vertigo Big Ass Tank. The Vertigo Attaché retails for an amazing $9.99. How much? Full metal jacket. They retail for $9.99. Pinpoint accuracy on the single jet. And let me tell you, this big ass tank fuels other lighters that have two jets. This one only has one. It's going to last twice as long. It looks like a Jeep, but it's metal and it's refillable and has the window and it's pretty awesome. And it's a jet. I like a single jet. I like a single jet as well. I like the pinpoint accuracy of it all. I think, yeah, for touch-ups, a single jet's the way to go. Listen, Ed Sullivan, I'm not carrying around two friggin' lighters. Everybody should have three or four lighters. You want a single jet for touch-ups and thinner ring gauge of cigars. You like the touch-up, Ed Sullivan. You're well, and I smoke thinner ring gauge anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, so they're more full body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> you use a double jet for Robusos and Toros. You use a triple jet for 60s, and then you use the quad for 70s and 80s. Yeah. <laughs> I don't smoke 70s and 80s. It's not like you use one screwdriver for every screw. You need multiple lighters for the Only task at hand. You need one flat one and one Phillips one, and that's it. Yeah, what happens if you get a really small screw? I have, I have the same size screwdriver for everything. Just change the tip. <laughs> you just agreed with my argument. <laughs> just shut up and eat that Reese's peanut butter cup because you have to. I was hoping you. No, I would never it. forget this. These, these are sacrilegious. It, you they're, have they're to do it. They're a crime against humanity. In honor of Eric Hansen because he loved Reese's peanut so, butter cups. So Eric Hansen would come with candy. In the beginning, we came with Reese's and caramel, mellow, caramellos. And I didn't eat Reese's, and he. he thought there was something wrong with me, and there, there probably is. is. So probably. he started bringing Kit Kats, so I would have Kit Kats. But I tried the Caramello. I never heard of it, never tried it, didn't even know it existed. It's not my favorite candy. Oh. I can't look at them now for the rest of my life without thinking of Eric. Sure. But the fact that I refuse to eat these in his presence, I'm going uh, to have one. And uh, it's sacrilegious. It's against everything I believe. Do you eat peanut butter sandwiches? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But I don't eat it with bread made out of chocolate. Well, that's because there's something wrong with you. Now you are. It's delicious. Oh. No, it's terrible. You like chocolate, mm -hmm. clearly. In the words nope. of Charles Barkley, it's terrible. 
Now, Barry, is it the combination of chocolate and peanut butter or the yeah, fact they, that Yeah, they don't go together. It's really not peanut butter. It's some kind of peanutty dust or something. It's like the peanut in butter in one of those cheese and crackers, the peanut butter crackers that you get in the uh, yeah. gas station. Yeah. It's that peanut butter, but it's Why disgusting. are you eating food at a gas station? <laughs> <laughs> gas station? That's snacks? Are you kidding we me? To, we need to really delve it's into this. It's not like Mike Mikey who works here in Salem that's eating the hot dogs from 7-Eleven. What do you do when you go to a gas station? Pump gas and that's it? <laughs> I've never stepped foot in a gas station. <laughs> I pump inside. gas, and I get a drink, and then usually a snack. You can't get any snacks if you're staying outside the whole time. That's why they let you do the card swipe. You swipe the card, you they pump the gas, they, you get the hell out of they there. They should stop that. They should stop yeah. it. You have to slide it in inside. That's the whole mistake that's happening. No. I need some more vodka. Of course you do. Here, uh, I'll just give you the bottle. Can I, have drink, at can it. I drink right from it? No. No. <laughs> mean serving thing. Well, so I will say, though, that Jonathan has quietly refilled his glass at least twice that I've observed. You know, Ed Sullivan, where rats go? Actually, it's, they go to hell. It's three, <laughs> and I've had to catch up to him. I'm on my second. So tonight's the sold-out father and son night that we've been doing now. Jeez, it's got to be eight years, at nine least years. years, yeah. Um, so if you're not part of it and you can't do it, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Call your kids up, have a cigar with them. Or call your dad up, sit down, have a cigar with them. If you can, your daughters, do it with them. I may call do my it. dad up and just have him sit there and watch me smoke a cigar. He yeah. won't smoke, but just sit there. Dad, I want to have a cigar with you. Well, I don't smoke. That's all right. Stay and watch Pretend me. Pretend like you're smoking a cigar and don't talk. It'll be perfect. You'll, you'll be sorry if you don't. You'll be sorry if you don't. So... Uh, it's important to do it, and I would say do it. So, all right, let's find out what's up in the Cigar World with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled N2 bar for a perfect draw every every time. time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And it's been a hard week in the cigar industry. In addition to losing our dear friend Eric Hansen, the industry also saw the passing of Cano Osjener, the founder of CAO Cigars. He was 81 years old. Jano. Jono. Yeah. The C is pronounced as J. Why didn't you jump in here? <laughs> You're correcting him <laughs> on yes, pronunciation. Yes, I am, which is, what the hell is going See, on See, there's here? a baseball player, Roberto Cano, and he spells it that way. Really? So, um, And as we reported a couple weeks nice, ago. Nice, nice man, by the way. Great man. As we reported a couple weeks ago, the Pan American Highway in Nicaragua is l- roadblocked, and the situation in Nicaragua gets worse. Various manufacturers have stated they are now unable to get cigars out of Esteli, and those who manage to get them out see the trip that normally takes a couple hours taking over 12. The situation escalated this past Thursday as workers went on a 24-hour labor strike, which was supported by the Nicaraguan Cigar Association. The U.S. State Department currently maintains a Level 3 travel advisory for Nicaragua, discouraging travel to the country and urges U.S. citizens to vacate. And I, I hear that the flights going there are totally empty, and the flights coming back are totally jam-packed. They're all leaving. And the Davidoff Diademus Venus was originally released in 2006 for the 100th birthday of Zeno Davidoff, and it will return this July. And lastly, as expected, the CRA, CAA, and IPCPR have appealed the D.C. court decision and have seeked the delay of the implementation of warning labels. And later this month, the case will be heard between the Texas retailers and the FDA, and that's What's Up in the Cigar World. What's Up in the Cigar World was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade-A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian Broadleaf filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Recluse Cigars is... What's up? Next week, it's the launch of the Saka Firecracker. Steve Saka will join us and his Firecracker from Nicaragua. And people were saying, you got them in already. Why don't you start selling them? He said, no, we sell them towards the end of, end of June, and this is how we do it. Can we and start calling it the Sawcracker? Sawcracker, sure. Can we okay. do that? What is the official name of it? Sawcracker. The Mikaita Firecracker. Okay, Mikaita Firecracker. And, um, when did it get two L's in it? 
Mi Kaida Firecracker. It's Mi Carita. Or Rita. Mi tomato, Carita. tomato. There we go. Anyway, Steve's going to come on the show. Always a good show when Steve comes on. And uh, we'll talk about uh, that new cigar. And that will be launched not this Monday, the following Monday morning, right? That's uh, correct. A week from Monday. Ed Sullivan, you won't be here, so I will be vigilant and I will do the ultimately count for you. Thank you. Steve Saka has that little tick that he does where he says the word ultimately about 50 times an episode. So you're going to count them? I, I typically keep track. So what do you say, ultimately? <laughs> he says ultimately. ultimately a lot. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and they're that's saying his, in the audience, too, that Sean's that's saying his it word. does. Really? I'm going to pay attention to that. Um, <laughs> not, but if he's listening to this, which he says he never does, but he does, he will not say it not even once because you're saying it. And we'll see if he really does listen. Now he's going to have to say it. Yeah, ah, now he has ah, to say a little reverse, good. reverse yeah. psychology. Ah, he's way, way ahead of us on that. The following week, Eric Newman will be on, and we'll we'll talk a little about him. Of uh, he's too much of a gentleman to get into that uh, ugliness of the big companies and the little companies. What's going on? We may on, be able to push him, though. Yeah, we're gonna push. We'll him. Try. We're gonna push him, and uh, then I will be heading out July seventh, uh, getting ready for IPCPR. We're gonna talk about. Um, who's going to be big at the trade show, who's going to be small. We're going to tell you all the new releases that are coming out, all the old releases that are coming back. Uh, That's going to be on the July 7th show. Moving forward to July 14th, I'll be at the show. Jonathan's going to stay behind. Ed Sullivan's going to stay behind. Barry's going to stay behind. You're doing it without us, without me again. Oh, yeah. The big toe will not be here. I don't even know what that means. I won't be here. (laughs) And then on uh, July 21st, I don't know why, because it was on (laughs) on some 80s movie, Stripes. There we go. (laughs) Stripes, that's why. He got it. so awkward to be called the toe. The big toe. The big toe. And if Eric Hansen was here, he would know right off the bat what that was. Sergeant Hulka, the big toe. Jonathan, you can be the little toe, because I don't think they're strictly needed. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that plays out for the 14th show. <laughs> we have a cigar event planned uh, of something we never did before. It's called Cigars and Guitars, a United Cigar Experience, uniting cigars in guitars. It's going to be on Friday, September 28th, 6 to 9 p.m. here at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. Learn to play some smoke and blues guitars with Guitar Ninja founder Jason Land. He's a listener of the show. He's from California. He's flying up. He's going to teach us how to play the guitar. We're going to smoke a couple of cigars. And then we all get um, two cigars and all access to the Cigar Ninja online course after that. And Jonathan needs to show me what he learned after that because we went to see Ry Cooter this week. Yeah. And I expect him to be that good. Yeah. He's only the number eight living guitar player of all time. Yeah. It's no big deal. No big deal. And at uh, like 100 years old, the dude can rip. <laughs> Can rip. All right, all right. All right, the following. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. You're not in shut charge you this up. week, Jonathan. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Dave would, because I was going mailbag on that. Would you rather never laugh again versus never use your smartphone again? Never laugh again or never use your smartphone again. What's more important to you? This hasn't been a very laughing week for me. And uh, maybe uh, I would rather not use my smartphone than not use my smartphone. Really? And and you must use it a lot, Barry. (coughs) It's destroyed conversation in America. I believe so. You go out, I'll guarantee you tonight, you look around the place, there'll be more people on the phone than talking to each other. I believe what has hurt social is social media yep it has hurt people of the act of speaking you are correct yeah that's what i think and that's why i think something like the event we're doing tonight is important sit there and talk get off your phones no i need my phone so i give up laughing and i would take up stand-up comedy and then i'd be all set i'd be able to deliver all the punchlines straight faced no problem i'm like barry correct (laughs) but you're just taking this because but you would rather Smartphone, it's not that important to you. You don't even use it. I got no battery left. It's only we're only halfway through the day. Yeah, it's all that. Ed Sullivan. Been watching. I'm gonna stick with the laughter. Yeah, you want the laughter, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Ed I, Sullivan. I don't think I've ever heard you laugh. Yeah, I ever. Ever. you haven't seen him on Wednesday or on Pete. <laughs> I did. I did. I did 50 years without a smartphone. I could do 50 more. 
I'm not even going to live 50 more. I want to go back to the days of the flip phone. I want to go back to the days of flipping the bird. How about the pay phone? Huh? Pulling, pulling up and putting oh. a dime in the phone and making a phone and, call? And the yeah. rotary phone. Yeah. You needed a good phone number. Otherwise, mm. it took forever to dial it. Yeah, here in New Hampshire, 898. Oh, my God. Oh, that was a pain. No good. Oh, he lives in New Hampshire? Uh, I'm not calling him. And back in the day, you'd be able to unscrew the uh, mouthpiece on a, on a pay phone, take a little can cap from a bottle of soda, tap it to the mouthpiece. It would be like you dropped the quarter and you'd make a free phone call. I saw that on a movie before. Yeah, it actually worked. Really? Yeah, until the phone company got wise of it. I, I knew you could do, you could take the mouthpiece off, yeah. and then you could touch the metal part with a wire and yeah. touch inside the mouthpiece yeah. and actually make the click, yeah. and it would work as, as a dime dropped in. Which is what he just did with a bottle cap. No, he's saying just touch it like the sound had. No, you had to unscrew the oh, thing. Oh, yeah, and then touch short it. The, the, oh, it yes. was the metal. Yes. yes. I, oh, I, I did it with a wire. You, was, the two of you it, are criminals. It. It, it, you it just, just admitted to possibly yeah, a felony on a podcast. The only I don't have a dime on me, and I'm at a pay phone. Right. I mean, walking around with all those dimes all the time. I was going to say, the only difference between yours and Barry's is his call cost a quarter and yours cost a dime. Because you were in New York. It was a quarter? Yeah. Well, I was, yeah. And well, he had to over? buy the soda yeah. <laughs> to get the bottle cap. So Right. But in the end, so you had a soda. Had, but he had the money. If I did it, because I, I didn't have the money, but I did have the wire. Can't believe the two of you are well, hard on the criminals. old New York City meters when they first switched to digital. Yeah. If you sat there with the quarter half into the meter it would for rip. 30 seconds, it would, <laughs> fault, it would fault the meter and you'd be able to park all day because it would never expire. Ah. Uh, so you used to go to like the, the Italian neighborhoods, Bensonhurst and all that. Every single meter on the block would be failed. Because all the guys in the uh, cafe didn't want to go and feed Or oh, you meters. put a paper bag that said damaged on it. Yeah, over, that over worked the for yeah. a while, too. I'm disgusted. You're, you're, <laughs> too, you're too young to know. That I'm too much of a straight shooter. I just put the quarters in the friggin' meter. All right, let's, uh, what are we running out of time here? What, what do we got to do here? We're at the matchup of the week. We did. Uh, so let's uh, give our early thoughts here on Moscow City. Toro. There's a subtle umami taste that I'm getting out of it which is synonymous with that Dominican tobacco. A little bit of sweetness coming off the wrapper. A little lemongrass. I'm getting a little lemongrass. Took me a while to get past the peanut butter and chocolate but there is that umami. Um, <clears throat> there's also a sweetness an underlying sweetness. Leather. What is this? The ash holes? You're just going to agree with me? No, I don't get any leather. Really? I got it from the from the pre-light and still to not. If I to take now. this box off the counter, do you still taste it? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my impersonation of Dan. Passed okay. over drone. They agree with each other? Uh, Aaron always goes first, and Dan always goes, yes, that's exactly what I get, too. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they have palates that agree with each other. Or not. And we're talking about our friends at the Ash Holes, which could be followed at the Ash Hole, the Ash Holes <laughs> dot net. <laughs> shh, shh, the Ash shh. Holes. The Ash Holes dot net. <clears throat> They're doing Dave, good. That shows. Dave's good. made the mistake many times. Yes, I have. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to prepare for the No Ed Sullivan Show next week. Who will take the reins on the wheels of steel? We're going to debate that. And an offer you can't refuse. My name's Barry Stein, and I'll do it. <laughs> oh, listen. We're you live from the here. Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass-looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet-like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. 
The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. This is Eric Newman from the J.C. Newman Cigar Company, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. As soon as the mic goes on, Barry starts coughing. That's the way we do it here. Broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. It tri- Are you going to make it? It triggers him. Down pipe. Uh, he, he, he muted he you. He ate one of those uh, beer claws, lobster, cl- lobster claws, the big uh, thing on one bite. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think his mic's on, Ed Sullivan. Yeah. Ed, see, it's it's off on purpose. Ed Sullivan is leaving us next week. Where is he going, and why? Where is that, Ed Sullivan? Where are you going? I'm going to Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. Family there? No. <laughs> yeah. All, all my Ed Sullivan. No, it doesn't. Are my uh, antecedents? They all live there. Ancestors, and what have you? They live in Portugal. No. Scotland. No. Ireland? Yes. Oh, good. So what what's in Portugal? Well, you know, my wife and I talked about it. I think, as you know, I used to travel a lot, over a million air miles. So if it was up to me, I would vacation on my couch. Right. But I said, yeah, I'd be willing to go to either Ireland or France. And she said, fine, we'll go to Portugal. Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to Portugal. Exactly so right. I think that's an odd place to, to go, <clears throat> Portugal. 
Well, you know, Spain is more common, I think. But Portugal's got nice beaches. Yeah. Lisbon's supposed to be a nice city. So I'll get a full report from you. Right. I term. learned from Dave earlier this morning that in Portugal they speak Portuguese. It's true. That is strange. Yeah. I, I think say, that it was interesting say. that he felt the need to point that out. <laughs> I did. <laughs> It's not like it was Brazil, and he says, you know, I, I think they speak Portuguese right. in Brazil. It's Portugal. Right. Don't I they think, speak Brazilian? I think that they uh, <laughs> speak Portuguese there. They no, do. I think in Brazil it's Portuguese as well. Yeah, it is. It is. Brazilian is, uh, is the wax. Correct. Wax soft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dave, who's, who's going to produce next week then? Are you well, going to step in? I or? am not. I am not, for sure. Dave did say to me uh, last week, you know what? I'm going to sit here and watch you produce. And he lasted about three minutes <laughs> and got interest. into a full panic attack and went and sat down someplace else. There's a lot going on now in the production. It wasn't like the old days. It, it, it was a lot going on in the old days. This is refined. Really? Yes. The, you used to get so mad. It's so easy. No, it isn't. It's not easy. See, I'm going to tell you why you should produce. You're going to have Dave and Steve Soccer on the panel. By having me up here, it makes them look thinner. Well, I'm going to make the argument that by having you up here, we risk not being able to hold all the weight up on the stage. We've right. stress tested before. I've been up here with Soccer and Dave. So. And I, if you agree to produce all of the other podcasts during the week... I will do the Cigar Authority. And tonight, after the father-son-daughter dinner, I have somehow managed to agree to dye my hair blonde. So our listeners are going to want to see me with blonde hair. I think you have an awful high opinion of yourself. <laughs> so they were all going to write in this week and say they want to see Barry with blonde hair. You're going to do a Sean? Sean's blonde right now. Barry's going to make blonde hair this week. Blonde hair, he likes it. He's got a smile on his face. He's actually approving of this. My daughter said, I'll keep the facial hair dark, and I'll be the Guy Fieri of the cigar world. You're going to spike You're it gonna like, have... like Sean does? You spike it up? Maybe. You're yeah. going to have the curtain match the drapes? Are we going full scale on this? No, nah, I'm a fan of Bra the Brazilian. Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> you have the lowest tolerance for pain for anyone I've ever met. I can't see that happening. No, it's pretty high. I'm here for two hours with you every week. <laughs> there we go. So who's going to do it? It's going to be Barry. Does Barry know how to do it now? Oh, yeah. He's well-versed. Does Barry know how to do it? Barry knows I, a lot. I could probably figure it out. Yeah. I won't do it with the expertise that Jonathan does. Ed Sullivan will leave his notes, and Barry will be all set. Is that going to be I'm, it? I'm calling for a write-in campaign that people want to see me with the blonde You can hair. call for anything you want. I'm pulling rank. You're doing it. And Dave has the final say. All right. What I do have the final say is the Don Raphael offer of the day. Did you bring cash? I did bring cash, but this would be for next week. And we could get not to see Barry with his blonde hair, but I will give $100 if you wear rubber underwear filled with ice cubes hmm. and do at least an hour on the set with it. Rubber underwear filled with ice cubes, one hour on the set, next week, right here on the show. Now, do you supply the underwear? No. No. They, they have rubber underwear, believe me. I mean, I, I've heard I, well, stories. I'd probably have to get it custom made in my case. Um, you don't have a pair? I have, uh, of course, I have several pairs. Yes. <laughs> many different colors to match my shoes. Latex I have. Um, but I can't have uh, extreme cold on my junk for more than five minutes, so I would, I would have to tap out on that. Who has the low threshold for pain now? It's not so much the pain. I just, I just don't like the coldness. Uh, I he, figured he, he can't afford the shrinkage. That's right. what it is. You know the story of me and the straight razor in my nether regions. I've taken a entire wrinkles off. No problem. <laughs> it's not the pain. It's the cold. I don't do the cold. Barry? No. It's I'll Sullivan, pass. I don't have to ask. You're you going you to be in Brazil or wherever you're going to be, right? <laughs> <There's> <laughs> some places be Portuguese. <laughs> right. <laughs> Could it be Portugal? Okay, that's the Don Raphael offer of the day, and it's not going to happen, $100. I'm going to figure I'm going to go with the $100 thing because <coughs> I want you guys to say, yes, you're going to do it, and the following week we do it. Mm -hmm. Huh? When you pick one, I'll do oh, it. I picked I'm, one. I'm you keeping your money. No, you can't pick one that has ice on my balls. I don't do that. I don't have very many lines, but that's one of them. That's a good Saturday night for me. You're welcome to jump in here. Uh, Saturday. Yeah, it probably cost me twice that just to get a custom <laughs> pair of underwear to fit. Get a big garbage bag. Just cut some <laughs> holes in it. Put the two legs through it. 
It's a show. Do, do it for the show. For the show. Uh, no? Not that one, no. no. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to catch it one of these times. And the following message is submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And John writes, you've talked about smoking cigars that you buy in the lounge, at the lounge, smoking them in the lounge. You recently addressed the concern of underhumidified cigars from the lounge humidor. I understand your stance on only smoking what you buy at the lounge or shop, but my problem with smoking a cigar fresh from the humidor is I like my cigars at a lower humidity and in range from 60 to 75, and almost all lounges and shops that I have access to keep their cigars at 70% humidity. What is your advice for someone who likes drier cigars than what is available at the lounges that provide their cigars at? Most likely they're not at 70. Yes, they keep it at 70 like we do, but we have people opening and closing the door all day long. So it's getting 70% humidity half of the day. In the other half of the day, it dramatically drops off because of the opening and closing of the cases. Walk, even walking humidors, everything, it drops. You open it up, and, and we watch the numbers end up cranking down. And we do a little trick here on the Cigar Authority that nobody knows about, and I'm going to peel the curtain back a little bit. We take the cellophane off before the show starts because you reduce your burn issues and you also reduce humidity on the outside of that cigar, giving you a better burn. So we take the cellophane off and let all eight cigars that we're going to smoke during that show rest for an hour before the show even starts. So by the time we get to the second cigar, the humidity has dropped dramatically on that stick. It's something that you could do. You could buy the cigar, just let it sit out out of the cellophane, type away on your computer. You've already made a purchase. You're all set. And then light the cigar up in half an hour or so. How about this, Dave? If it's something I purchase from the store, something you sell... I bring the one that I want to smoke and then buy one when I get to the store. So I'm still smoking something I purchased. Yeah, from you walk you in, smoke it, and you buy a cigar and go in the lounge, and you got the one you already lit in the course. That's good. You, you, you made the purchase. I, the I, idea I'd is sign you, up you, you're paying for your seat, right? Right. You made a purchase. And But you can't come in with, I don't think you go sit in the lounge with a cigar that the store doesn't even carry. And then Correct. people say, hey, what are you smoking? <laughs> oh, I bought this online and I got it a good deal. And not good for business. No. Not good. Not good for the industry. Not good for anything. Not good for <clears throat> anything. Um, all right, anything else? You really must not have any questions for the Classic 3-Way. I have plenty. I have actually, you want, want to go to the Classic 3-Way? I got six in one. Six questions and I got one <laughs> Sounds like an IPCPR special. Tiebreaker? Yeah. Tiebreaker. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. Epic Rap Battle of the world! But now it's time for the Epic Battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. He is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under three dollars per cigar you like that baby let him know where i came from yeah choose any blend including the classic connecticut for its mild and smooth taste the classic maduro for its bold and spicy flavor or the classic cuban for its sweet sun-grown and nutty overtones that's undertones you idiot whichever classic you choose it's a classic cigar available at twoguyscigars.com that's twoguyscigars.com celebrate today with a classic cigar. Ed Sullivan, our champion once again. And it goes to you first, Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur, also known as Tupac. He was one of the most notable figures in the East Coast, West Coast hip hop rivalry. He released four albums, eventually selling over 75 million albums worldwide. He was killed in a drive-by shooting after watching a Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas, Nevada, but he was born today. What year? Let's go with 1971. 71, he says. 65. 65. 68. 68. Somebody has two points. Ed Sullivan. Damn it. 71. Not to get sick of it. Ed Sullivan with two points. Moving over to you, Mr. Jonathan. Geronimo, Native American hero from the Apache Wars who led his people in the fight against the U.S. and Mexico. He had nine wives and fathered six children. His first wife, children, and mother were attacked and killed by the Mexican soldiers. He was forced to surrender and lived many of his remaining years as a prisoner of war. 
Geronimo, born today, what year? 1697. 1697. 1838. 1838. And I had 1827. 1827 for the point. 1829. You friggin' kidding me? I'm beginning to suspect Ed Sullivan. Is he cheating? No. Can you guys see the screen there? One thing is, he won't win next week. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Barry, Arthur Stanley Jefferson. Also known as? Thomas Jefferson. George Jefferson. Dudley Moore. Stan Laurel. Comic actor best known for one half of the Laurel and Hardy. Classic duo actor began their era in silent films and that lasted 25 years. Stan Laurel, born today, what year? 1891. 1891. Is it me? Yep. 1878. 1878. 1890. Unless it's exact, Barry's got it. 1890. Somebody has two points. Mr. Jonathan, who thinks yes. he made a mistake, and that's why he got the two points. Isn't that weird? Do the Nailed opposite. it. You didn't want that number. You did exactly the opposite. I said, I either have it exact or Barry's got this. All right, so it's on to Ed Sullivan. James Brian Helwig. Also known as James Brian Helwig. Anything? The Ultimate Warrior. Ah. Born in Crocusville, Indiana. He died in 2014, but he was born today. What year? The Ultimate mm. Warrior. Let's go with 1972. 72. 1958. 58. 56. 56. Mr. Jonathan gets a point. It's 59. You almost got two, but you got one. We have a two-way tie here. Whoa. Mr. Jonathan and Ed Sullivan and a Barry actually taking Mr. Jonathan's spot with the goose egg. And I have two more questions and a tiebreaker. Who's this to? Me. <clears throat> Psycho. The psychological horror film directed by Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock starring Janet Lee, Anthony Perkins, opened in New York City today. What year? The movie Psycho. I'm waiting for you two jamokes to write it down. I already written. You have your answers locked in? 1960. 1960, he says. 61. 61. 63. 63. Somebody has two points. Mr. Jonathan, 1960. Oh, he's on a tear. Five to two. Suck it, no, bitches. I think I have three. Five to three. Five to three. We have one question and a tiebreaker. There's no need for a friggin' tiebreaker if I'm in the lead after this. Just really? for the record. Well, if he ties you, then there's a need for a tiebreaker. So you let us know there is he a tiebreaker. He ain't tiebreaking me. Let's go Ed Sullivan. I got this on lock. <laughs> it goes to Barry? Yes. Blues Brothers, the movie premiered in Chicago. Today, what year? The Nin Blues Brothers. 1977. 77. 1980. 1980. And I, too, have 1980. It's written down, so whatever Ed Sullivan gets on this, I get too. Did you do that on purpose to so it was already written down? That looks like 1990 to me. Well, that's 1980. I know it wasn't 1990. Well, Ed Sullivan gets two points. And so do I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Ed Sullivan, you can go on vacation knowing you're a loser. Five to seven. And it you because you got a tie there, don't you think you deserve the final question? There was Just there is see. no tie. I'm at seven. But and he, he's at five. That's he, not a tie. Do so, you understand how tie work? How yeah, yeah, but work? He, got the, he got the points before you. He did not get them before <laughs> me. We wrote our answers down at the same time. You're Come welcome on, to ask the last question, but it isn't going to change anything. I am the champion, and you will not take this from me. Can't touch this. Ooh. By MC Hammer. Peaked at number eight today. Hang on. on i got to figure out what can't grade I was this. in. Can't, I know exactly when it was. Can't touch this. 1983. 83 says Barry. 1985. 85. It's 1989. It's 1990, but you'd get the point and win, and you got it. Do you want to keep this? Because no. you haven't won in a long time. <laughs> All that matters is that I'm a pressure player. I, I seem to do well when things are on the line, like Ed Sullivan's going away. I've got to represent as the champion next week. You are the champion next week. You know what you Ed want, Sullivan right? Ed Sullivan doesn't like it. You won the 
great to produce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you beat the producer, therefore you are the producer. Beat huh. the producer. So uh, tomorrow is Father's Day, um, July 5th, 1908, in a West Virginia church held in honor for 362 men that were killed in an explosion from a coal company seven months prior. And many, uh, there were fathers gathered together, and that started it. Two years later, Washington became the first state in the country to make it a statewide holiday. That was June 19th, 2010. Slowly, the holiday began to spread. With the help of President Woodrow Wilson in 1924, President Calvin Coolidge urged all states to observe Father's Day. Uh, but it did not become an official holiday until... 1972. Wow. Imagine all those years. Mother's Day had already become a national holiday in 1914. Yeah, they leave, it, they leave us to the end. But it took six years later. How do you guys feel about buying presents for every single person that you know is a father? No, that's ridiculous. No. It's ridiculous, right? You buy it for your father and that's, that's it. it. You buy your father a present? And, and, no. and, and after we life, don't celebrate holidays like that. Your, your wife's father, too, because he's now your father-in-law. Well, when you... you and you the kind gifts of coming buy, from both yeah. of you? Right. It becomes joint on it's both a joint, ends. It's a joint present. I'm with you there. So do people spend much money on Father's Day? Americans are expected to spend about $15.3 billion on Father's Day this year. Yeah, oh, it's $30 billion for mothers, but... I have the number on mothers. It's $23.1 billion. I was the closest without going from over. From 15 <laughs> to 21 billion. But uh, hopefully they're spending some of that here at Two Guys Smoke Show. Would that be yes. nice? <laughs> $15.3 billion. We spend more because they complain more. The average spend. The views of Barry Stein are not necessarily <laughs> reflecting the views of the rest of the panel here what, at the Cigar what, Authority. What's the average spend on a father for Father's Day? Uh, $55. Uh, $15. 27 135, you cheap bastards. <laughs> I'm just going by what I get. Usually, yeah. usually <laughs> that high. You're bringing the average down, Ed. Yeah. So, average is 135. If you get anything less than that, that's a good thing as you retailers out there listening to the show and the people that are working here. Somebody comes in to buy something, they spend $110. You know, the average is 135, <laughs> just so you know. Are you saying that other people love their dads more than you love that's yours? That's right. How much do you love them? How much do you love them? Uh, I end up bringing the average way down because my dad refuses to celebrate Father's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, Christmas, Easter. He's very anti-holiday. But if you gave him a gift, he would say, I'm not accepting that. It's Father's Day. It would, it would count against me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would not be getting bonus points. I'd be getting anti-points. Really? Yeah. Maybe you need to buy better gifts. Maybe he just didn't like what you bought him. Maybe. Maybe. Spend that $15 gift. <laughs> <laughs> a, a bushel of broccoli is the not most, a good gift. It's the most expensive big pen on the market. Writes upside down. Mm. All right. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. Hey, guys. Great show. And enjoy the ability to smoke along with you with the care package. Uh, the other week, you guys did the lighter maintenance, and it went deeper than the last time, and it was great. I was able to resurrect another lighter. I also thoroughly enjoyed the Strength Gate segment. For future shows... How about taking a scientific approach to the old mold versus plume argument? Uh, Recently, a site I visited had a bit of scientific take on it that was mind-boggling. Uh, add that to my local retailer who is dense and actually believes in fairy tales. I don't know what he means by that. It's, mm. it's usually mold, just so you know. It's well, if usually, you have soccer, there's no such thing as plume. Well, there is plume, yeah. but the, it's a rarity as opposed yes. to overhumidified mold. Go ahead. Thank you. Also, uh, what about a month going four weeks with the care package and a show with extreme variation on opposing tasting notes? Pick something so obviously one tasting note over the others each week to get people more into it. I don't follow Might be hard to do it for $20, but if that cigar can't be included in the care package, just pick one that, easily can, that can easily get to play along with the home version. Barry, Dave, Mr. Jonathan, and Ed Sullivan, thanks for the many hours of enjoyment and learning from your yada, show. Yada. Keep it up. But explain that again. What is he trying to so say? So he wants to say, let's say uh, we all decided that this cigar tasted resoundingly like leather. So this ends up in the care package. Oh, you're starting to taste the leather. No, not at all. <laughs> okay. And 
then everybody would get to know a cigar that tastes like leather if that's the flavor note that we're right. all picking up. So we would have to smoke several cigars in advance. I'm willing to be on the panel for that and pick out overwhelming tasting notes, and those go in the, the care package. So we say La Giana Natural has an almond taste to it, does it not? It's Garofalo. Garofalo, Garofalo. Of. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. It's Garofalo, Connecticut, right? Garofalo does taste like the skin of the almond. You get a little bit of that bitter, a little bit of the sweet. Yeah. Do you taste that too, Barry? I get nuttiness. Uh, yeah. I haven't eaten a lot of almond, almonds, but it's no, definitely nuts. It's obvious. Speaking of someone who's eaten a lot of nuts. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, your brother's here. Your brother's here. <laughs> That's how they do it in their family. They spend $15 for their father for Father's Day, and they call each other bad names. And that's part of the charm of uh, the Mr. Jonathan family. That's right. So what is, the, is everybody in your family have Mr. Jonathan and the... My brother, Sammy B. Sammy B. Jonathan? No. No? <laughs> no. But your wife is Miss, Mrs. Jonathan. That's what she goes by. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. She hates that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> hates it. When we did, we just did a little uh, a four-stop tour over three months, and I marketed her as Mrs. Jonathan. Keep in mind, we're going to dance events, and she is nationally ranked in some dances and internationally ranked in others as a judge. She can call up Len Goodman and be on Dancing with the Stars anytime she wants as a coach. Why don't you do it? She doesn't want to. Why? She just doesn't want to. Oh, my God. The reason is because she wants to dance with Brian Bosworth. <laughs> and he, they were. Sl she was slated to be on the show. Remember, we did the um, Valentine's Day, and we yeah. gave away her book. Yeah. She was supposed to have already been in California teaching him how to dance for two weeks before the show started to tape, and he got picked up for Dewey, and he couldn't be on the show. So they offered him Howie. They offered her Howie Long, and she said, "I'm out. If it's not Brian Bosworth, I don't want to do it." So did he ever do it? No. She just has an unhealthy obsession with that dude. She has every <laughs> movie, both of them. He's written two books. She's got them both. She has a little even, shrine. So if she's dancing is. with Brian Bosworth. Would you cut in to dance with Brian Bosworth? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. <laughs> I would even be the girl. All right. It wouldn't be the first time. All right. It won't we're, be the last. We're out of time, and I'm glad the show was over because I, it was rough, rough it start. Was. Hey, uh, congratulations to everybody on the show. That was two rough weeks. Yeah. And i got to say, I think that we handled it not only with class and grace, but also – very tough on our end because we lost a friend yeah. to be able to come forward. And we're not joking around out of irreverence. We're joking around to be able to get through it. And hopefully anybody that loses a loved one can look to humor to help kind of break out yeah, of the funk. Very rough. Next week, an explosive show. Steve Saka from the Meat Carita joins us with the 2018 Firecracker. We'll light it up and tell you how you can try it. Until then, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. You've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And no matter how you mispronounce whatever cigar you're smoking, always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.